Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. It's kind of funny how things from the past come back or we realize how beneficial they were. Hey, styles come back. Like, for example, wallpaper is now popular interior design. It was big, you know, back in the 70s and 60s with your grandmother or whatever. Even fashion, you know, bell bottoms are back. That was the 70s. Well, what about herbal medicine? There, It's having a, a thing now, but interestingly, this plant-type medicine is where our current medicine came from. And now more and more people are looking at a more holistic way of life when it comes to remedies. We're going to look at that. Herbals and how it can support you and what it all means. She is somebody that's got insight in all of this. Here's the difference. Intuitive insight. She's a medical intuitive. And we're going to talk with her once again. Dr. Gloria Warren, our professional of the year, is back. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing well. Yourself? Hey, you're fantastic. And Great. when we say intuitive, what are we talking here? You are somebody that can help give insight through your intuition into somebody's medical situation. And I've seen it in action. You've done it for me. It's, it's pretty amazing. You even told me things that I, I wasn't even aware of. And then that weekend, they popped up. It's not like I asked them to. Little things. No big deal. Um, but you said, you know, you're probably going to have a problem with this. You're going to have a problem with that. Using your intuition. Not a substitute for a traditional doctor. Call it more of a tool. So today we focus on this thing called herbal remedies, right? How do you define that? Right. Well, herbal remedies are things that grow naturally in nature. And uh, one of the things I do want to stress is I work with physicians. So and I can work separately from physicians, but I do give all the information to the patients so they can take it back to their physician or they can make those decisions on, on their own to a certain degree. So um, what I do is uh, medically, I, I have a medical background as well as um, I'm an herbalist and herbologist as well. There is a difference. I study Chinese medicine, um, rainforest medicine, Native American medicine. This is like one of my loves of life. I just love delving into historical past and seeing what they did centuries ago and what worked then and maybe apply it now. Things are wonderful. But a simple thing people can work on themselves is is, um, herbalism. And uh, being an herbalist and herbologist uh, herbologist is a step further than an herbalist but anyone can begin learning about being an herbalist by studying natural medicines in nature so in simple thing aspirin derivative from the willow bark native americans would take the willow bark and simmer it and boil it and then drink the liquid which then the the compounds they needed were in the liquid so it's simplified when it comes to natural medicines. So um, there's things that you can look at, such as, say, if you're having a bladder problem, you know, there's juniper seeds, they grow everywhere. You can collect it as long as you know that they haven't been sprayed with pesticides, and they're not poisoned in that sense. Um, You can take it, you can crush up a few, put them in your tea and corn silk. Another thing, if you know somebody growing corn organically without pesticides or chemical uh, sprays as fertilizers, you can take that corn silk. That's Native American once again. Corn silk tea, great for bladder infections. Not a complete substitute, but it may work on most bladder infections. So um, things that boost your energy. And in today's world, we know everybody needs that from time to time when we go to reach for that coffee or real strong tea. My, me personally, I use yerba mate tea that I get from a monastery in South America. It is absolutely phenomenal, very high caffeine, uh, helps with a lot of other ailments as well as energy. Um, you can use sage, you can use peppermint, you can use um, ginseng. There's many herbs that can help with energy. And depending on your specific situation, I'm able to uh, list a couple, give you a couple suggestions that would help with the, that problem, but not hinder you in other ways or harm you in other ways with your own synergy, taking it into account. Mm. So 
And that is um, one of the things I do. I do teach herbalism. Um, I am an herbologist as well, uh, if people wanted to learn that. But uh, my main goal here with all this historical research I do, it's based on historical writings, also based on a lot of nowadays medical research that they've done on these types of natural alternatives and with positive results. So, I mean, if anyone wanted to know uh, a link, I can send you a link that will show you some of those medical research studies, clinical studies with positive effects from um, different things from go-to cola and dandelion root and walnut husk, things that I actually grow on my own on my land here for me medicine to make tinctures and that type of thing. But if you wanted to text me, I can always send you that link and I'll just forward you a link and you can go ahead and uh, look at so how some of the medicine today is based on that uh, research. And some of that research shows that these alternative medicine items do work. Um, many, many extensive studies on um, garlic even and things that you, you know, sometimes you go on Wikipedia and they'll say, oh, alternative medicine doesn't work. Well, yes, it does. And clinical studies have proved it. So hmm. I never really dug into it until I um, had some some digestive issues in the in the fall. So I consulted before we met with a master herbalist and she made some suggestions. One of them was drink aloe, but with pulp. So I took a while to find it, the ones that, you know, the legit stuff that has pulp. So I found uh, a source for it and, you know, did that. And she made me up a concoction of um, cat's claw catnip. Yes, I said catnip and marshmallow root. And I'm going to say that before I tried this, I was getting kind of close to maybe driving to the hospital. It was getting that bad. I don't know what was going on. Eventually turned out to be uh, gastritis and a little diverticulitis after I, you know, did the scope and everything. And back in the day, you know, seven years, years ago ish, um, I had an ulcer. So I thought, oh, ulcer's back. I tried this natural concoction. A day and a half later, I started feeling way better. Two to three days later, perfectly fine. And yeah, I was on Nexium. I've taken that forever. Wasn't doing anything. All of that stuff. Yeah, wasn't doing anything. And then I since gotten some other things from her uh for other uh other issues here and there you know whatever um this stuff works it was amazing i mean you know catnip really <laughs> like uh, a marshmallow root well, I, I'm, I'm not even sure what that is but it worked great you know something to keep in mind um for emergencies a couple pinches of baking soda or a half a teaspoon of baking soda or some bitters and seven up excellent immediate relief from a, a excessive acid in your stomach. Uh, you'll do a lot of belching, but you'll get rid of the pain immediately. But you really need to find the source. What is the actual problem? So you have an emergency thing you can rely on, but then you have to look at what the source is. Things like Nexium and Prilosec and Prevacin, those are what they call proton pump inhibitors. Yep. And proton pump inhibitors work great, but only for about two weeks at a time. You cannot, you should not take it. Um, the American Cardiology Association has even stated that only if blood is involved, because it does can lead to heart failure in long-term use. So whether it's children taking it or uh, a lot of the trends are mm -hmm. children. And, and, you know, it's, it's sad to see because really they need to look at and see what is the root cause of that problem. Um, so, you know, I mean, there's a place for it in Western medicine, because let me tell you, if you have to go on it for a couple of weeks, it really does help. But uh, I like me personally, I like to stick to more of a natural situation. I have been on a proton pump inhibitor previously, and it did its job, you know, under the oversight of my physician, we, we um, decided it was the best thing for me at the time. And it was, but uh, in the pinch you know a pinch of baking soda works great <laughs> um we don't realize it. it yeah yeah because something we, simple we've been programmed to go to the pharmacy and reach right. for something because we think that's the best but um, i'm gonna say here that you know those medical professionals that we put up on a pedestal um they have a place many are great but doesn't mean they have all the answers it doesn't. Nobody does. Nobody does. Right. You're, <laughs> no, you're, it's all a balance. You know who has the answer? Us. 
we know our body right. better than anybody else. And your intuition, your intuition. <laughs> so, you know, if you're feeling something, you're probably right about it. But of course, you know, we gravitate in other directions because we've been programmed that way. Um, I want the proton pump inhibitor. I want to go to that for a moment. Somebody told me, and the reason we take those is to inhibit the production of acid in our stomachs. Mm-hmm. Somebody told me uh, that is, uh, I want to say, pretty uh, proficient in digestion. Told me that it's that's not what's going on. You don't have enough acid in your stomach, and people are taking right. this. And depending it's- on the cause the root cause. So your stomach could be over secreting acid if you're constipated or maybe just past your stomach, it's narrowed and swollen and it's not letting the food go through. Your body's natural response is, hey, I'm going to stick more acid out there so that we get this to come through when it may be a different cause. And then other occasion though you'll feel sour stomach as i call it and mm. you're not body's not producing enough acid and that's when people should reach to apple cider vinegar mm. or other acidic type of things to help the digestion yeah so knowing the root cause is really the most important thing you can do with anything you do with your human the human body hmm. yeah it's the stuff that we don't know and a lot of times we go to the doctor symptom medicine we're not going to the root cause. We're just you know, putting a Band-Aid on it, if you will. Right, mm-hmm. right. And and the, sometimes the doctors, you know, may not have the time to sit down with you and get to the bottom of this. Um, you know, Lord forbid, but that is a commonplace in today's medis- medical communities. Um, but, you know, that's where I come in. If I can find the root cause, put it all down, you can take that to your doctor if you wish. And you can uh, have your doctor, you know, I can put down what the root cause is, they can see it. And then um, the one thing I have more of, I mean, I'm time limited too, but I try to give the time necessary to a patient if I need. And um, then they can just take it and the doctor can look it over and say, hey, you know, maybe we should check on this. Let's check on this. You know, whereas maybe he didn't have the time to look over all of that or ask the right questions that he needed at the time. Mm -hmm. Well, Lord knows that many one doctor is treating many patients at once through other tentacles, other oh, yeah. nurse practitioners and and uh, EMPs and things of that nature. So you're lucky if you have. I think the average is 11 minutes with your doctor, and that's on the plus side. You know, get them in, get them out, and even that's unusual around my area of the woods. <laughs> you, you you're saying that's that's higher. That number's higher. The 11 minutes. Mine is very little. If I, I'm lucky to get two minutes with a doctor, if I go into the clinic, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, where you get the most time or more time, I feel, if it's at an urgent care place. Uh, but I don't know about you, my insurance, you're paying for it. <laughs> you know, you're paying way more than you would for your doctor because, you know, it seems like they may be a little bit more attention, but it all depends on where you are. What's interesting is your medical intuition is the tool, but what mm-hmm. we're talking about today is an extension of that, and that's the herbal remedy to take care of what's going on, the, the the root cause of it. And my feeling is, what do you got to lose? I mean, throw me your potions, lotions, and concoctions. Right. Uh, if it comes from nature and it doesn't conflict with maybe something else you're taking or your overall situation, consult somebody, you know, the medical professional for that. Uh, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? Right, right. Just like um, uh, I had kidney stones when I was younger. And I've had them since my younger age. I've had them once. I have a tendency of being dehydrated because, you know, like we were saying, the physical exertion dehydrates you faster. And and, uh, also cultural things add to that genetics. But um, with the dehydration and getting kidney stones, I decided to to go my natural route, which was Chanka Piedra. And they dissolved my kidney stones within three days. I never had to go through any extensive procedures or whatnot. So kidney stones, gallstones, and uh, other kidney functions, you know, it may be something you want to reach for first if you're not in dire need pain. Of course, if you are, you go to an emergency room. But um, if you can hold off a few days and try that and get some relief, you may actually Hmm. negate uh, potentially having a a type of procedure or surgical surgery of any sort, you know, if necessary. Yeah. And final, final thought on all of this. Everything that we're talking about, these concoctions, if you will, have been around for centuries. This was the medicine. Love tinctures. 
of, <laughs> right. This was the medicine of the people that we evolved from. Yes. Uh, and then big pharma came in and big billion dollar. We won't even go there. That's that's yeah. there's a place for each of them in society, yeah. but it's just not you know leave their places to them. And I deal with more of the nat- natural. Uh, and, and and I'm on your page. Uh, somebody wants to find out more, Gloria. How do they find you? Well, if they want to text me, it's seven one five eight nine two six three zero four. I will send that link if you put link in the text. Um, 715-892-6304. And then they can look at my website at medicalintuitivegloria.com. Simple. Always always That's amazing it. talking with you and uh, learn so always much. Thanks for being here today. with you too. Thank you. We'll Have be, a good one. You too. We'll be right back. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Hey, Dad, how do airplanes fly? What's in this box? Can I touch this? Where does sand come from? Is this tree good for climbing? What happens if I mix these two things together? How are babies made? What does this thing do? Kids are curious about everything, including guns. Talking to them about gun safety in your home is a good first step, but you can do more. Always keep your guns locked, unloaded, and stored separately from ammunition. Storing your guns securely is the best way to prevent family fire, including unintentional shootings. For more information on safe gun storage and ways to keep your family safe, visit endfamilyfire.org. That's endfamilyfire.org. What do we keep in the attic? What's this thing called? Can I ride my bike backwards? Like I said, kids are curious. It's up to us to keep them safe. Brought to you by N Family Fire, Brady, and the Ad Council.